Today, I'm going to show you guys a skill that is super useful. And once mastered, you'll be able to make amazing animated emotes for yourself for absolutely free. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. I am your host today, The King, and we are going to be teaching you guys how to animate emotes. This is really easy to do and can really step up your Twitch game when it comes down to how professional looking your stream is. If you are a partner already on Twitch, this is extremely useful as you can use these as your chair emotes or if you're not a partner, you can use these as alerts or your host, your raids, bits, anything like that to encourage your audience to do this. You also can use it on your Discord and so much other places, and it is super easy to do. It might seem very, very, very difficult at first, but after you watch this, you're going to try it for yourself and you're going to see how easy it is. Now, before you jump ahead and go on into this, what you need to do is first of all, have Photoshop. This is very, very important. If you don't have Photoshop, you won't be able to do this the way that we're going to be teaching you. And after that, make sure you have consent from your artist to actually manipulate their artwork. This is very important because you don't want to tamper with art that you're not supposed to. So make sure you get their permission. And if you bought these off of Fiverr or something like that, you more than likely already have the rights to mess with them so you can go on ahead. Alrighty, so once you actually have those two things down, what's next to do on the list is to figure out what emote you want to animate. Now, I have a bunch of emotes, as you can see here. And today, I think I'm going to animate my Pog emote. Once you have everything here, sometimes your artwork image may not be as good quality as you may want it to be. Typically, if you are getting this, it's normally going to be in 112 by 112. If yours is any bigger than this, you don't need to worry about this step. But in the case that it is a little bit blurry, what you want to do is you want to actually take it out and you're going to create a new file size and we can make it by, let's say, 800 by 800. This is a pretty decent file size. And once you put it in and you scale it up, you press control T to actually get the transform. You can see that it becomes a lot blurrier than it actually is. So all you need to do is to save this to your desktop, save it as a PNG file and remember the name of what you're saving it as. And once done, you can go ahead and use any free program that there is online and enhance your images. Once you finish doing that, you can rebring your image here and you can already see the drastic difference in quality that we have between the two images. So your goal here is to separate every layer of your email. Now, in some cases, if you are in contact with your artist, they can send you this. Sometimes they may charge for it and you can get the actual PDF or whatever program they're using to have every single layer separate. So that means the eyebrows, the nose, the mouth, the eyes, the hands, or whatever your emote is will be completely separated and ready to go. In certain cases though, you won't have the luxury of doing that and you'll have to do it the hard way. So what you need to do is to extract every single layer, put it onto a separate layer, and this is the more tedious part. It's actually funny because the animation phase of this is very easy with Photoshop. So all you need to do is start picking apart everything that needs to be on its own layer. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool here. And all you need to do is to start selecting things that go together. So for example, this yellow star here, this yellow star here, and this yellow star here all will go together. By using control X, I can cut it and then control V to paste it again, put it back where it belongs. This is all you're going to be doing in this phase, cutting things out and putting them back where they belong. I am now going to be using the lasso tool and this is going to help me to actually outline the parts that we need to cut out. If you're not familiar with the lasso, you can use the polygon tool and this one's actually a little bit easier to do. All you do is select one point and you continue to select points wherever you want to go. So I just need to cut this mount out. So I'm going to go very carefully around the mount. You don't have to be ultra precise with this, so don't worry. You don't have to get it to the brim. Just make a rough outline. And all you need to do is do control X and control V, put it back where it belongs. Once there, repeat this process for everything that you need to do. All right, so I've gone ahead and cut out every piece that I want to be animated or I want it to be moved. Obviously, the emote looks a lot weirder now with all the parts missing. This is where the next step comes on in. So you're going to create a new layer in the bottom right by pressing the new layer button, and then you're going to drag it underneath the main layer that you have. Once you've done that, what you want to do now is use your brush tool and you're going to select the color that is closest to the color of your emote. And you're basically going to go behind it and fill it in just roughly whatever that color is. It doesn't need to be super precise. Just get the main color of what you need to do. 
If you want your brush to be a little bit more easier to use, turn the hardness all the way down. If you have it all the way up, what ends up happening is you make really hard lines and it's really hard to actually get them down. So turn your hardness down and then once you do that, it looks a lot more smoother. They're basically going to do this and if there's parts of the emotes like hair for example where the hands used to be that you don't really know what belongs there, try to give a rough estimate of what you think would be there. It doesn't need to be precise, you don't need to be an artist to do this. All you need to do is to figure out roughly what's going to be here. Once you do that, you just fill it in. Keep in mind, a lot of this is not going to show. This is just extra background work. So when the time comes that the emote actually moves, there's not going to be a space such as if you take a look right next to this air where there's nothing there. You don't want that to happen because then the emote will have a big gap and it's really difficult to fix that in post, so it's easier to get it out the way now. And a quick reminder while we are doing this, don't forget that you guys can actually use these animated emotes as well to put on your stream loot card. So if you guys are interested in stream loots, make sure you go ahead and click on the link in the description or by clicking the title at the top to get started. Once you have all of the colors filled in as I do here, I'm just gonna fill in the top piece here. This is when you're gonna go to the actual layer that holds everything and you're going to be a little bit more careful now and all the outlines from everything that you cut out you want to start erasing again use your brush tool and make sure the hardness is at zero and what you do here is hold the alt key and click on the color that's nearest if you hold the alt key you can actually adjust the size of your brush and what you do is simply just get rid of all of the outlines and every time you move to another spot make sure you're holding alt to select the color that is there to make sure that the colors stay the same on areas where the colors are bleeding, such as the blushes here, and they're really, really hard, you basically make sure your, again, hardness is all the way down, your brush is all the way up, and you can just click around the area, and instead of giving a very hard line, it gives a very soft line to blend it in very well. And all you need to do is to rinse and repeat on certain areas to make sure that the blending looks good. And that, my friends, is pretty much all you need to do to make sure that the emote is prepped and ready to be animated. Again, you can skip all of these steps if you already have your artist that is willing to give you all of the layers. But if not, as I said, in most cases, you don't have it. Now the emote is looking a lot more nicer. It actually looks like an emote just missing some features. You can now re-bring back your layers to see what it actually looks like. And it's time to edit everything down into its actual phase. Now remember, when it comes down to layers as well, such as these stars, I cropped them out originally all together. But at this point, you want to separate them now. And again, we do it the same way by highlighting the entire emote by using the magic tool or the quick selection tool, control X and control V and just putting it back where it was. Before you do, give one quick look at every single part that you cut out. If you can take a look at my hands, it doesn't look like a complete hand. You wanna make sure everything is completed even if you think it is because sometimes they're not and that can lead to some very 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 big faults later on so make sure that every layer has its full set of pieces so you don't need to worry about that later on in post because you would have to redo every single step in order to combat that it is time to animate so on the right hand side where my tools are what you want to do is to right click on everything and click on convert to smart object. If you don't do this, you will mess it up. So make sure you convert everything to smart object and you have to do this individually. Now you will have to open your timeline in the bottom. Now, in most cases in Photoshop, you won't have this down here. So in order to turn it on, you go to window and you go down and click on timeline. Once you have that, you will see two sections which says create frame animation and create video timeline. You wanna click the one that says video timeline drag this bar a little bit higher and then click on create video timeline. What this does is make every single layer into a video animation and you can see it all here. Now, this is where you're gonna determine how long you want your actual animation to be. You can have it being at least two seconds, maybe even five seconds. It all depends up to you. The average of where you would want to put it is about two seconds though. This gives it enough to give the emote a lot of life and it's not dragging it out where you have to animate and worry about a lot of things. So all you do is you take this bar all the way on the right hand side and you drag it to about the two second mark. And remember 15 frames make one second. So 30 frames will give us a two second part. 
I personally like dragging every single piece all the way down here as well. You don't need to do that, but it's very convenient in the long run. And now is where the actual animation process comes in. And I'm going to show you how easy and fast it is to do this. So simply what you do, you take your base layer, make sure that you also combine this base layer with all of the edits that you made in the background. If not, you'll have two separate layers. So make sure it looks like this if you unclick it and there's no extra paint behind it. And what you do is you click on the little tab on the left hand side to open up the timeline. This is going to open a lot more options and we're going to focus on the trans form option you're going to click on it here and you're going to drag this all the way to the end and click on it as well and then you're going to go about to the middle mark and you're going to click on it one more time from here all you need to do is make sure that this is highlighted in yellow press ctrl t to transform and you're going to hold the control button and click on one of these sides so by holding the control button you can pretty much move it anywhere you want so let's say we put it all the way down there and now we can click the play button. You can see that what Photoshop does is actually make it so that it can do that. It, it basically syncs up the points and it will do all the hard work for you. Obviously we don't want it looking like this. So we're gonna control Z to undo what we did. Control T again and hold alt. And what I want to do is to make this emote go a little bit up. You can unhold control to actually make it a little bit bigger. Maybe add a little bit of a rotation. And whenever you see any points here if you can take a look where it actually shows that there's nothing here you just hold control and drag it on in by holding control it actually makes it so that the image gets a little bit pulled and it stretches it out a little bit more so i liked where this is at so if we press the play button now we can see that the emo gets a little bit more in your face you can see that he's very excited very happy and that is absolutely amazing and now what we do is rinse and repeat the steps for every single piece that we have. Now, you're probably wondering, why did we separate all the layers? Well, here's where the fun part comes as well. Now, when we go to that point, you always want to go back to that point and notice how every other thing is stagnant. What you want to do is you can do the same thing, hold control and start moving them to basically fit what the image would look like. So in this case, I want the hands to be a little bit bigger and we can also do it to the second hand. Make sure you're also making all three of those marks before you do anything. This way it has a start and end point. And then you just match up the second hand as well. We're going to do a little bit more animations to the hand later on. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. But now we just take everything one step at a time. And now we can see that the hands actually move together. If we didn't break the image up beforehand, the hands would be stagnant with the actual base. And it will look a little bit wonky and not as realistic. And now we basically rinse and repeat set the two layers, uh, set the uh, pinpoints, I should say, in the timeline with the transformation, control T. Now we can just stretch them out open a little bit more and continue to make sure everything looks good. So now as it goes, we can see that the mount opens a little bit more, the hands come together and it's starting to look good. And then for the stars, we do pretty much the same exact thing. We create our three points and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but again, not as hard. I want this star to be as big as it is now, but start off smaller instead. So we go to the first point that we have here, click on it, control T as normal, and just make it a little bit more smaller. We put it back in the general orientation that it was, and we right click on this frame, click on copy, and we go all the way to the last frame and we click on paste. This is important because you want your first and your ending frames to always be the same so it syncs together and always continuously loops. If you don't do it, it'll have a cut and it'll look really weird. Now if we press play, we can see that the star gets bigger and goes around. It looks pretty good. And then we basically rinse and repeat. We want this one to stay bigger so we'll just do our same three points. And then in the middle, we can go ahead and set it to go smaller so we can just make it really, really tiny and maybe even put a little bit rotation on it and then we'll do the same thing for the last one there we go we can see some twinkling stars they look really nice i'm actually going to make a rotation on this one and that's the beauty of it you take a look at it you see what needs to be adjusted and you adjust it as you may we're going to do that one like this and now we can have a great animated emote just like that and now you can use these emotes to basically use for twitch use for your discord or whatever the case may be and it doesn't end here. There is a lot more that you can do with an emote like this, depending on how much work and how much time you want to put into it. But you basically just gave your emote some life. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more work and show you guys what it looks like if you take your time with it to show you guys some more animations that you can do. 
just to give you guys a rough idea. I'm not going to be super precise with it because I'm not actually going to be using this as I already have one, but I'll show you guys what it can do. And alrighty, here we go. And this basically shows you what a little bit more work can do. And it, again, it's not as complicated as you may think to give these animated emotes a little bit more life. There's so much more that I can do with this. I can put a shine on the crown and even make a little air wiggle and it honestly depends on how much work you're willing to put into it and yeah it's really awesome so i hope you guys did enjoy this video there's more advanced things that you guys can do as well with these emotes for amazing alerts in fact i can show you one right now and if you guys are interested in seeing that you can let me know and we could make one so i'll show you here what my subscription alert is and you can see that we have the lovely animated email with a bunch of things going around in the background and then you have the text that says someone has now subscribed so that is a little bit more advanced and i can show you guys how to do that as well so please let me know in the comments if you would like to see that and yeah now you can use this to enhance your twitch to look a lot more professional you can use these as cherry emotes as i mentioned you can set these up as alerts as you've seen that i shown you just now you can put them in your discord and offer them as rewards to your subscribers people will really really enjoy these but my friends that is going to wrap it up for this video i hope you guys did enjoy and you learned something here today make sure you subscribe to stream loot so you can learn some more amazing streamer tips and you can also catch me in the links down below as always i'm the king it's in my crown to you guys and we'll see you guys next time